what's on his mind. Unfiltered analysis and commentary. My hands were steady. My eyes were clear and bright. My walk had purpose. My steps were quick and light. And I held firm. Morning, morning, morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on Cliff Hughes Online. First of all, this morning you get two for the price of one because I have with me this morning Mr. Tyrone Reed. Good morning. Top of the morning to you, Sir Cliff, and top of the morning to all our valued listeners and, of course, our those who are watching on YouTube. Very well. Good morning to you, Mars Cliff. Good morning. Last night, looking through this report. Oh, you, you know, we got the report sometime after two yesterday afternoon, and I've been reading it since then. But it's not reading a novel, yes, because you have to read and go back and, you know, try to process it. So I'm almost finished. I think I've covered the critical parts of it, yeah? And uh, it is going to be the focus of uh, Cliff Hughes Online this morning, yes? So let's get to work now. <clears throat> the, 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 for, for me, Tyrone, the issue or set of issues now come down to this. Is the Prime Minister of Jamaica, yes, now facing credible allegations of being involved in illicit enrichment? Is there a prima facie case against him? That is what it comes down to. Cut through everything else. Cut through the technical issues, the definitional issues. That is the question. The Jamaicans are focused on this morning, or should be focused on this morning. Is the Prime Minister compromised because of this report findings and the allegations therein? That's what it comes down to. And uh, that is more to the point because of the following. It's been three years, three years, we first got whiff of something being wrong with the Prime Minister's statutory declarations. We now know from the report tabled in the Parliament that the Integrity Commission pursued, yes, its initial assessment findings of the 2021 statutory declarations through several channels. <clears throat> its usual channels of ferreting out more information. In fact, in the report it said it examined 3,600 transactions, 80 witness statements, and it went further. It thought it necessary and prudent, given the transactions, given the issues, given the suspicions that would have arisen, to employ an international forensic accounting examiner for six months 
six months to say to the examiner, help us to unravel what we have here from the Prime Minister of Jamaica. And surely the examiner would have been briefed by the investigations team at the Integrity Commission about their concerns about the transactions between the three companies associated with the Prime Minister, Imperium, um, Gemerald, Green, Green Emerald, and Estate Bridge. <clears throat> and after six months, and reporting from the International Forensic Accounting Examiner, the Integrity Commission said, listen, we are not able to conclude whether the Prime Minister has been guilty of illicit enrichment. Yes, that is what they have concluded. We are not, we are unable to conclude that the Prime Minister is guilty of illicit enrichment. But nonetheless, they now say they want the local Jamaican-based state agency, the Financial Investigations Division, to look further into these transactions between the Prime Minister's three associated companies. And I am saying, how can that be a starter? For one, the FID is a state agency headed by a government that Andrew Holness leads, and more to the point, the Ministry of Finance it, it reports to. How am I going to accept what the FID says? Yeah, Jamaica is smaller. We know how things go in Jamaica. And most importantly, if you're an international forensic accounts examiner, didn't pick it up, or whatever is there to pick up, what do you expect the FID to pick up? It's not making sense to me. It's as if the Integrity Commission is saying, having met as a jury, yes, we can't arrive at a verdict. It's a hung jury. We don't know. After three years and considerable resources and time, in those three years, the Prime Minister has been hammered politically, and more than politically, because the Prime Minister is damaged. You can't tell some Jamaican people, yeah, that he's not guilty of financial irregularity or impropriety. Some people will never accept that. Some people are calling for his head. That's my two cents on it, Tyrone. I don't know if you're here to. <laughs> to understand to what you said and I, I spent most of last night I was as I was sharing with you and uh, Nora before I came in here uh, trying to read through all of this report um, before this morning and I want to thank the good people at the integrity commission for their verbosity yeah that kept me up all night uh, there, there are some things that were restated uh, and I think some things that perhaps could have been kept way simpler yeah the 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 report need, needed not be this voluminous. But I, I may go a step further, Sir Cliff, to your, to the point you made. I think it's important um, for everyone to know that Sir Cliff and I have not compared notes on this. Yeah, um, We are just now speaking to each other on air, and I'm now first hearing his remarks. I, I think it goes beyond Sir Cliff they, that, they, that they've met 
as as jury and the jury's hung. I think there are uh, people within the Integrity Commission who are convinced that Prime Minister Holness is guilty of something. I, I think that is my reading of this. But but what they believe he's guilty of, they're not able to prove. Now, the, the Integrity Commission had two bites at the statutory de de declaration, Sherry, in 2021, if you read the report uh, uh, in, in full detail. Mm -hmm. They started, I, I gather they were, they had some concerns, then they had stopped and believed that uh, he had omitted some things and it was inadvertent. And then they restarted uh, the, the investigation into the Prime Minister again. As you've rightly pointed out, Sir Cliff, uh, in the second go around, the DI placed under the microscope, as he said, 3,600 transactions examined in respect of 28 bank accounts, over 80 witness statements, and it didn't stop there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, because based uh, they they hired according to um, in accordance with Nationwide's reportage on this issue, the DI's report confirms uh, that an in independent let me read as they put it in the report exactly an independent international forensic accounting examiner. Yeah, for those who didn't get it the first go around, let me read it again. Mm -hmm. They employ the services. This is the Integrity Commission of an independent international forensic accounting examiner, uh, uh, of course, was engaged by the commission due to what it describes as the complexity and volume of the transactions involved with respect to the PM's statutory declarations. Now, mm -hmm. according to the report, it says based on volume again, this independent forensic examiner took six months pouring over the transactions linked to the PM's bank accounts and those three companies you named, Sir Cliff. Mm -hmm. A report was prepared and submitting. Still no smoking gun on the illicit enrich re enrichment allegation. Still no smoking gun. After all of that, and I believe, based on my reading of this, that should concern everywhere thinking Jamaican. It should concern everyone thinking Jamaican because the Integrity Commission doesn't want it to stop there. They want to get other entities involved in probing this issue. In principle, am I against other entities probing it? Not necessarily, but I have an issue with the Integrity Commission in this matter because it appears the Integrity Commission is a dog with a bone that it is refusing to let go of. After all the resources over that time that you have been able to look at this, and while I was reading this circuit, I, I, I just want to point out, because I jotted down several things, but one of the things that jumped out at me was the double jeopardy. I'm sure you're familiar with that yes. legal term. Yes. The act of prosecuting a defendant a second time for an mm -hmm. offense for which he has already been tried. Mm -hmm. And the question I believe that must be asked of the Integrity Commission is, how many times are you going to try Prime Minister Andrew Holness, pardon me, Prime Minister Dr. Andrew Holness, mm -hmm. for this matter? He, they may, they, 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 the wording, certainly, of the report, I think, is of particular importance. And I'm trying to find where I made a note of this because I want to read verbatim for those who are watching and listening what they basically described the investigation into. And I'm not sure if you have the, the report before you. Yes, yes, I, yes, uh, I have the, section the, the allegations. Yes, if you can read what where? the DI described that he was investigating, sir. Which part of the report? Uh, no, just just the just the, the description of of the of the outline. Um, what they are calling um, illicit uh, allegations of illicit enrichment. Uh, let me see if I can find that quickly. It it's says it's 177 have, pages, you know. So no man, I mean at the, at the very top, man, at the very at top the of chapter report, what? Chapter one, summary of very, investigation very, that leads into yes, what they are investigating, right? Okay. Uh, listen, it, it says here 1.1. 1. 1. This yes. investigation by the director of uh, the most honourable prime minister, hereinafter after Mr. Holness into the 2021 statutory declaration is based on a referral by the commissioners of the commission pursuant to section 14.5 of the Corruption Prevention Act and section 43 of the Integrity Commission Act. More particularly, there were concerns 
uh, Mr. Holness owned assets disproportionate to his lawful earnings for the declaration period and that he made false statements in his statutory declaration for the stated period. The referral from the commissioners inter alia indicates the following. The declarant's net worth was calculated based on information that was included on statutory declaration for year ended 2021 and additional information provided by the declarant. And bullet point, first bullet point, net worth grew by 51 million over the five year period that ended December 31, 2021. This calculation includes the conversion of income and net worth from U.S. to Jamaica dollars. Only point two, unexplained changes in net worth was calculated as 4.5 million, and I round that off for the year ended December 31, 2021. Only point three. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. The, 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 according to um, uh, of the DI investigations report, now not the report, um, uh, the 5.515 of, of one of the reports tables. Listen uh -huh. to what it says, circuit for listeners. Yeah. The DI, meaning the director of investigations, Kevin Stevens, was unable to arrive at a final calculation in respect of illicit enrichment because he was not provided, he says, with a schedule of the PM's personal expenses over the relevant period as well as unresolved questions around the operations of connected companies, those companies you reference. Mm -hmm. A couple of things I'd like to ask here. The report later alleged that the PM was asked to provide the schedule but, but refused and, and I gather that that response was informed by his lawyers because that's what the response from the Prime Minister said. After discussions with his lawyers, he believes he has provided to them all that they need. If the Prime Minister has failed to provide what is lawfully required, why didn't the Director of Investigation recommend to the Prime Minister, uh, recommend to the Director of Corruption Prosecution, pardon me, that the Prime Minister be charged for failing to comply with the Integrity Commission Act, a lawful requisition? Yes, I'm sure the law allows for that. No case was made for that. The director of investigation made a case to circuit for listeners that the prime minister should be charged for making, knowingly making a false declaration <laughs> to the integrity commission. Of course, we know that matter has been put to bed by the director of corruption prosecution, who said that the prime minister really has no case to answer. No charges have yes. to be laid because not a viable case can be mounted mm -hmm. against the prime minister. Now, the illicit, illicit enrichment allegation is, is particular, particularly curious to me, Sir Cliff, because the Director of Investigation did not recommend to the Director of Corruption Prosecution that the Prime Minister be charged or consideration be given to charging the Prime Minister for illicit enrichment. What that says to me as a reader is that he does not have sufficient evidence Absolutely. to charge the Prime Minister. Yes. Now, how... To allow this to continue, I think, would be indecent, and and I and I put it I put it no stronger than that. And I have remarks on the prime minister coming in, but I put I I'm say, tackling the integrity commission for first. Pardon me, there was not sufficient evidence to recommend. What mm -hmm. they had sufficient evidence to recommend to the director of corruption prosecution, she denied that it met the mens rea. You have mm. to substantiate that the prime minister knowingly, not inadvertently omitted. Yes, they are quoting bank accounts name um, that had the prime minister's name on it. For me, it was a minor that was stated in the report. And of the two of the four that the report said the Prime Minister should have declared when it was boiled down to the case law, existing case law, the Director of Corruption Prosecution says that the Prime Minister does not have a case to answer because they cannot mount a viable prosecution. Yes? And I have a problem with this because how long will the Integrity Commission, if you cannot prove illicit enrichment, with or after all the resources that you have, have, have deployed in this matter, after all the resources, at some point, Sir Cliff, someone within the Integrity Commission is convinced, because when I look, and let me tell you my reading of it, I look at the, the amounts of money being exchanged in, in those companies that the Prime Minister is affiliated with, or connected to the Prime Minister. Yes. 
And they're saying, based on his salary, he needs to be able to explain this. Now, if the prime, the prime minister also has private interest as well, he's not just a politician. I get he has businesses as well, which is yes. what those companies would suggest to us. Yes. If, if the issue is you cannot connect, you cannot, after having forensically examined the prime minister's declarations, you can't say, okay, we have made out a prima facie case that the prime minister has illicitly enriched himself. How much longer should the prime minister um, be, be pilloried over this issue? Well, if you cannot prove illicit enrichment is the question I ask. Well, let, 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 me, let me, we have to go to the break, right? The point I will say just before going to the break, Tyrone, yes, one of the sad realities we have to face this morning is that this matter is now mired in politics, partisan politics, and uh, there are those who will believe, no matter what, that the Prime Minister up to some shenanigans financially, and those who will believe nothing of the sort. That's where we are at this morning. Absolutely. That's where we are at. And uh, as we will hear later, in his reaction, the Prime Minister in the Parliament yesterday said that we will have to urgently review the law governing the Integrity Commission and how it does its job. And we, including the Prime Minister and his team, will have to look in the mirror and take stock as well. Yeah? Because they too have some questions to answer. How we have governed structured the integrity commission yes and issues to do with the, the prime minister's affairs yeah so this is a a big moment for us as of a, a young fledgling democracy yeah but I, I agree with you we can't continue to have this going on now with an FID investigation. How are you going to have FID do this when the FID reports to the political executive? How? Sir, sir, sir Clint, if I may jump in, I know we have to go to the big, but I want to say this. We will find eventually what we're looking for. Yeah. And, and that, that is the data with not authorizing this. And if that, you are convinced that something is wrong, you will eventually find what you're looking for. And that's yeah? why it may, it may very well be a witch hunt. As some have described it. How can how can we how, and, and, and I think the integrity commission has opened itself to be reasonably accused of that. And, and before before we go, the point I was trying to find in the report was the the caption which read re-ruling concerning investigation conducted into the statutory declarations submitted by the most honorable Mr. Andrew Holness, Prime Minister, for the years 2019 to 2022 in respect of concerns that he owns assets disproportionate to his lawful earnings and that he made false statements in statutory declarations by way of omissions contrary to law. And of course, that latter allegation mm -hmm. of making false statements has been shut down by the Director of Corruption Prosecution. Yes. yes? yes. And But the issue now, I think we need to train our attention when we come back on this issue, yeah, uh, of, of this allegation of whether or not the Prime Minister illicitly enriched himself. The, in, the Integrity Commission has been doing this for what, three years now? Yes. Yes. And this report, 179 pages in one of them alone. Yes, that does include uh, the, the comments from the Director of Corruption Prosecution and another addendum that they submitted uh, uh -huh. later on as well. Yes. Not, not, they cannot demonstrate that the Prime Minister has illicitly enriched himself, and so they are asking for outside help. And we have to talk about this. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we also have the report from the International Forensic Accounting Examiner? Absolutely, and the country... That and should be part of the report. How much was spent? And how much was spent to employ exactly. for six months? Tyrone, I, we, we have a chartered accountant 
Yes, Dennis mm-hmm. Chong at 10.30. And uh, the JLP communications person, Marlon Morgan. Yes, because we want to help our listeners to understand the, the issues of the intercompany transactions. Because to me, that is the part of the report and the findings that we need clarity on. That is not clear. And we, we, we are not very good at understanding these business practices. So I've asked Dennis to join us. Mr. Morgan will be in on the conversation as well. So that's at 10.30. And then you pick it up after. I remember I leave you at 11. All right. Uh, Can't wait. Good. My hand was steady. My eyes were clear and bright. I walk in. I step forward. Jointly together. Tyrone. Good morning. Today, um, you may be able to me while I've uh, something for you, but yeah, I think this is the first time we've been on together like this. All right. Well, we're going to turn now to what I consider to be the most troubling part of the findings that we were not privy to, privy to before, and it speaks to the companies associated with the prime minister and. Uh, The director of investigation says, further, the questions surrounding the use of funds belonging to Positive Jamaica Foundation to purchase, in part, a bond worth US 94,000 and the operations of companies with which Mr. Holness is or was associated and which he named as the source of funds to acquire particular assets would also need to be resolved by the relevant entities before the DI can make a final conclusion on the question of illicit enrichment. Significant financial transactions were seen among three of the referenced companies, namely Imperium, Positive Media, and Estate Bridge. More particularly, says Mr. Stevenson, the evidence indicates deposits and withdrawals totaling over $473 million and $427 million, respectively, between 2020 and June 2023. Yeah? And then he goes down to, go, go, goes on to say, The DI further concludes that Mr. Holness's indication on July 16, 2024, that the full portion of the bond of 94,000 US was erroneously attributed to him by NCB Capital Markets is misleading and unsupported by the evidence. The DI's conclusion is based and he gives a list of things. Now, returning to chartered accountant and public commentator, Dennis Chung, who knows, as a chartered accountant, he knows a little bit about these things, more than a little bit, much more than we do, as well as uh, JLP Communications. Uh, what, what is your title, Mr. Morgan? I'm a member of the Jamaica Labour Party's Communications Task Force. Please. Okay, good. So let me begin with you, Dennis Chung. What must we, the members of the public, make of uh, the findings and conclusions drawn here by the Director of Investigations where these intercompany transactions are concerned? Um, you know, I'm trying to... I've, I've, I've been <clears throat> going through some of the, the things here in the report. I've already thought of it. Um, and I've got, of course, your news report and down to what's in the green uh, um, and I'm trying to figure out what the relevance of that finding is because transactions can move um, between accounts based on you know liquidating one asset, getting a loan, you know, and setting it up somewhere else. And set it up somewhere else for you. So, for example, Positive Jamaica, I understand, is a foundation, and um, you might want to move money from a foundation to another account. 
which is an investment account, um, to do transactions. And, and particularly when I look at Table 6, which is the assets, liabilities, and income held by Mr. Holness, um, you don't really see any significant positive movement in it. I mean, you see that there's a movement between U.S. dollar assets and Jamaican dollar assets, but the total of it, right, um, it doesn't seem as if there's any significant um, increase in assets um, you'd expect. Of course, that you'd have some increase. The other thing is that, you know, the increase doesn't necessarily in, in, in the assets doesn't necessarily have to come from income. It can come from the capital value of the asset. And remember, capital gains are not taxable. Um, so there's a lot of things that you'd have to get into more and more into it. Um, you know, the, I, I've, I've looked through the report and I see, for example, that they're requesting a loan from a company that does not have the income to lend the money. You don't have to lend money like that. Mm. Um, you can lend money by, by basically being a guarantor, you know, taking it in, in one name and, and sending it to another mm -hmm. company. Um, you know, so there, there are some things there, Cliff and, and Tyrone, um, Marlon, who are doing that. Um, yeah, that I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm still trying to understand the conclusion from it because I think there are still some things missing. So I'd ask a question, for example, what were the findings from the forensic auditors that were engaged? Did they find anything? Because I would think that you'd want to look at the source of income, right? And, mm -hmm. and where the asset values come from. Um, also, what was the response from the tax persons? I mean, people filing meal returns, it's, it, you know, if, if you don't generate any profits, because remember, income is not profits, then, you know, you could file a meal return. Um, um, and a lot of people also in the country is not just be touching this one, get dividends, for example, which is taxed at source, and don't know that they're supposed to file that also. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm, I, I don't... I, I don't find that there is anything um, suspicious with it when I look at it. The, the DI says in 615, the DI concludes that the filing of nil income tax returns for the years 2021 and 2022 on the part of Imperium, Estate Bridge and Positive Media in circumstances where those companies reported income and other business activities in their audited financial statements poses significant tax compliance concerns. He went further and he said there he's concluding that the conduct on the part of the principals of those three companies uh, makes out a pre prima facie constitutes a fundamental undermining of the tax laws and more particularly, a breach of Section 99 of the Income Tax Act. And he has referred this to the Commissioner General of Tax Admin. Yeah. That, that, um, is, that is troubling for the Prime yeah, Minister to be so accused. The assumption also is that the tax people are not doing their work if, if, the, if the, 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 um, the filings were made. Because when you file, you actually do file financial statements with it. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you're just going to file the returns alone. As I said, if there's no profit, then, of course, it's going to be nil because you don't get charged tax on total income. In fact, you know, I was saying to someone today, a company can, can have a $100 million income and another one have a $5 million income and the $5 million income pays more tax mm -hmm. because they have more profits. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with filing a nil return if the nil return you're talking about is, is, is um, the, the, the profit, the mm -hmm. profitability can be nil. Mm -hmm. And you file, file nil. I mean, of course, in your returns, when you do it, you would show your income, your expenses, and everything, and that would be cross-checked against the financial statement. And the, the tax people, you're not going to file a return like that. You have to give them the documentary support mm -hmm. as attachments to it. So I would find it difficult um, to believe that they would just accept that like that without, without checking it. Because uh, as I said, you do have... The, the documentary support that they cross check against, and you have to file those. Um, and, and, and the way the tax tax filing is done now, it's not something that, that is done manually. I mean, it, it cross checks itself. 
these are the reforms that he filed. So, yeah. yeah. The other thing I want to hear you on Chartered Accountant, John. Before, before you move on, Secretary, yes. I, I, just this point, I don't, I don't want to leave this point, because so Dennis, that's one of the things that John told at me in relation to the referral being made. Of course, we heard the, the President of the Senate saying the commission has no such authority to make these referrals that it's it's doing um but, but it, it suggests that the tax people um are not doing their job just that point i wanted you to to, to expound on a bit more for me because the report did accept that they filed the report but yet the the integrity commission is referring the matter back to the, the, the people at uh, tax administration and, of course, under the authorities of, of, of the Commissioner General. It, it isn't if they filed it, it. Doesn't this mean it was subject to the, the, the scrutiny of tax administration? Yeah, and that's why I say it suggests that, you know, when you refer back to them and saying, basically saying to them, hey, this has been filed, but guess what, you overlooked something, you know? <laughs> Um, and, and that's why I said that. So, you know, that, that, that consideration is to me. I think the tax people, the tax department actually does a very good job and they do have maybe some of the best um, technology systems available in government. So I, I would find that very strange. Um, as I said, you know, people need to understand. Um, we